so happy to welcome you to session six of our formation series, Respect the Dignity of All, Kids Engaging Racial Equity. Today's song and prayer will be led by Will Ramsey. Our song is called Set It Right, based on words by Sojourner Truth. She was a woman who was born enslaved and fought for freedom, women's rights, and the end to slavery. At the time, slavery was really common and it was legal. This is a reminder of the ways that laws don't necessarily lead to what's fair for everyone. Ending slavery required walking with two feet, freeing individual slaves, and also changing laws so that people could not own slaves anymore. Hi, I'm Will from St. Mary's, and we're under construction. Today, I'm gonna to lead you in a song called Set It Right. So the first thing I want you to do is pause the video because I want you to go grab a pot or a pan or anything you can use like a drum. <coughs> All right, so just like when your grown up is in mass and they're doing the prayers of the people, I'm gonna sing a line and then you're always gonna respond the same way. So I'm gonna say, there's a great trouble in the land. And then you're gonna sing, we're gonna set it, set it right. Let's do that one more time. There's a great trouble in the land. And you say, we're gonna set it, set it right. All right, so grab your drum, grab your mallet, and let's get that beat going. <coughs> There's a great trouble in the land We're gonna set it, set it right There's a great trouble in the land We're gonna set it, set it right There's a great trouble in the land We're gonna set it, set it right We're gonna set it We're putting our feet in the paths of love. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're putting our feet in the path of love. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're putting our feet in the path of love. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're gonna set it. We're learning who God made us to be. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're learning who God made us to be. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're learning who God made us to be. We're gonna set it, set it right. We're gonna set it. to my heart. God, help me to care for others. God, help me to rest. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, I'm Jessica from Grace St. Paul's in Tucson. When a person is baptized in our church, they and the whole church make promises. And one of those promises is to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Through this series, we are learning how to respect the dignity of all people and love each other just as Jesus taught us to do. Some weeks we talk about an idea or question. Other weeks we talk about something from the Bible. And every week we hear stories. 
This week and next week, we're talking about caring for our world. We have already learned so much these past few weeks. Let's begin today with saying together the Bible verse from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Say after me. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. What a beautiful verse. This verse comes from a letter written by the Apostle Peter, and it reminds us how God calls us to be. It tells us to work together, to care for one another, to love one another, to offer kindness to others and to ourselves, and to not brag about it. Did you know that God's love is so powerful that it encourages us to be kind and caring toward one another? In fact, God's love is so strong that God sent the Holy Spirit to us to help us stay connected to God and to one another. Have you ever felt God communicating with you? When God calls us, it can feel like many different things, but it usually feels very important and like something we can't ignore. For example, you might actually feel something physically in your body. Maybe you see someone crying and your chest hurts or you feel sad, so you want to help them. Perhaps you see someone being bullied and a voice inside your mind or your heart says, you should stand up to the bully. Those are all ways that God speaks to us. God created our bodies and our emotions and our minds. Surely God uses those things to communicate with us. Today's lesson is really about learning more about ourselves and our world. Who are we? Who do we share our world with? How does God call us to live in community with one another? Think of a time when you saw something with your eyes, heard something with your ears, or noticed something that caused you to feel something deep in your heart. Maybe you even heard a little voice tell you to help someone else. Close your eyes and take a few moments to think of a time when this may have happened. With your own experience in your mind, let's hear a story about a young boy named CJ. In this story, CJ is learning about himself and the world around him. While you're listening to the story, notice what CJ is seeing, hearing, and feeling, and also notice how CJ and his grandmother interact with the world around them. This book is called Last Stop on Market Street. It is written by Matt de la Pena, and it is illustrated by Christian Robinson. CJ pushed through the church doors and skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus and all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw.
From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the doors swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Kobe never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact, their noses too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You've got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus and out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it into the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. 
CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street, street lamps still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now, come on. this kind of paying attention that we've been discussing. We are going to make mandalas. Mandala means circle in Sanskrit. This sacred art form can be used as a meditative way to symbolize the universe and our roles as a part of the universe. We will be thinking about balance, reflection, and symmetry as we create our own circles using items we find. Mandalas are used across cultures and religions, but they are originally from Asian cultures and can have sacred meanings in Buddhist traditions. When we participate in another cultural tradition, we have to be respectful and appreciative rather than trying to own it or change it. What have you appreciated from other cultures? Think about things like food, music, and art, as well as values or stories you might have experienced. It is always kind to say a little prayer of thanks for being able to participate in something from another culture. We'll keep gratitude in our hearts while we make mandalas today. Here are some things you might need for this activity. Today we learned to be present to ourselves and our world, to notice who and what is around us, and to listen and feel for when God is communicating to us through the Holy Spirit. We heard a story about CJ and his grandmother and contemplated how they were being kind, humble, and compassionate. We even thought about where Jesus would be in their story. We're creating mandalas which represent an awareness of life. The circular shape of the mandala helps us understand our connectedness to each other. We all belong to a variety of communities. A community can be defined in many ways. It can be a group of people who, sh who live in a shared space or are part of the same institution, like a school, or who have a shared history, identity, or interest like a church. They can be big, small, or anything in between. The people in your house or your classroom are examples of small communities. Some big communities are all the citizens of a country or people on a shared continent, all the way up to the global community, the people of the world. Identify a community that you are a part of. Who are the people in your community? How is this community a part of a bigger community? How is it connected to other communities? We invite you to continue to notice and observe your world this week. Please share your mandala pictures, drawings, or thoughts on the Respect the Dignity of All Facebook group. You can also share about nature 
or about a community that you are part of. What is the community? What do you love about it? How is it connected to other communities? While you are there, look at the posts from others to see who they share the world with and notice if you share any connections with others. Most of all, have a blessed week. Our closing song and prayer will be led by Sarah Peterson. The song is about how worshiping God and working for justice can't be separated. Hi, I'm Sarah from St. Barnabas in Scottsdale. Please join me in our closing song, Listen Up People. Listen up people, listen up people, listen up people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. Listen up people, listen up people, listen up people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. So when you say your prayers, always be aware. They're not just words to be mumbled at night. Help us, O oh God, to learn to treat each other right. Listen up, people. Listen up, people. Listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. Listen up, people. Listen up, people. Listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. And when we get together in any kind of weather, our worship is more than it seems. Let justice flow like an ever-growing stream. Listen up, people. Listen up, people. Listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. Listen up, people. Listen up, people. Listen up, people all over the land. Worship and justice go hand in hand. Now join me in our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. Amen. <laughs>